So I just posted a video on how to build your first ship in Starfield, which by the way did crazy well, thank you guys so much. And a lot of you asked how I built the ship in the thumbnail and that I stuck at the end. I mean, a lot of you guys did. So I figured I'd be a man of the people and deliver what you're asking for. I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the ship and then I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to build it. But this is really gonna be more of a show and tell with a little bit of a guide. So if you're looking for the full ship guide, you're gonna have to watch the video I talked about at the beginning of the video. Because for some of this, I'm going to assume that you just know what I'm talking about. And just like last time, if you guys think I lived up to your expectations and delivered what you wanted, uh, let me know by hitting that like and subscribe button so you guys know the next time I post a video on Starfield. So first, I'm gonna give you guys a quick eye candy tour of the ship's exterior and interior, and then I'm gonna go over how I built the ship and how much it cost, as well as where I went to build it because that is important too. So if you want to build this and make it work right, you're gonna wanna watch that part of the video. Now, this ship is actually the longest ship you can build in Starfield at the moment. It's 80 meters long. You can build it a lot taller and wider, but I think that the proportions of the ship look really good as it is right now. I tried to balance the utility with the look simultaneously. Now, some of it's not optimized, but I didn't want to make a giant box or phallic shaped ship like a lot of people end up doing, which I've noticed tends to happen a lot in a lot of these games where you can build ships. But if you want to fly around in a giant d then I'm not going to stop you. I mean, I'll power to you if... If you want to kill people looking that way, go ahead. Now for the armament, I'm using four turret-based neutron cannons, which are incredible. They're actually automated and will shoot at targets when they're near and hostile. They work a bit different than the other weapons you have in the game. And then I also slapped on some rocket launchers. There's four in total, including one right in the nose in a really cool location, which I thought was cool. It reminded me of the Battlestar Pegasus from Battlestar Galactica a bit. And then to finish off my three set of weapons, I equipped it with some EM non-lethal weapons in case I want to board something. So the armament is pretty flexible here. It's not a pure killer. It's got kind of a mix of different weapons. And I wanted to give the ship a really big ship feel, so I selected a cool set of rounded thrusters, which I really liked, which are also one of the best in the game, and the DS-30 bridge to give it a really big feeling. And the interior of this thing is awesome, but I'll show you more of that when we go inside. For the entrance of the ship, I actually cheated. I used two parts from different manufacturers on this ship, and this one is actually from Tayo, and I like it because it has a side entrance versus having a ladder entrance, which means that you can just enter in on a deck if you choose to put a deck on the lowermost part of the ship, which I did here. You enter in here at the engineering bay, which I thought was pretty appropriate. This could instead be like a cargo bay if you choose, but I like having engineering on my ships, and I think its position right next to the engine makes a lot of sense. You'll also notice that I was able to get one center vertical circulation shaft for the ladder to work instead of separating it around the ship. This makes it really easy to navigate the interior when I'm trying to find different decks and utilities like the workshop. All right, so then if we head up the ladder, the next deck is what I call the habitation deck, and you enter in through what is called a companionway. It's a single size module, and this is how I was able to kind of make the navigation work the way I wanted. I'll show you this in the construction part of the video to see how I did it, but I think it works really, really well because I get an airlock here right in front of this habitation section, which could be closed off in case of a decompression. That's not a thing in the game, but I mean, I'm just kind of thinking about like if it were designed as a ship in real life. I kind of like doing that as part of designing ships in video games. Anyway, you enter in on what is the living area, basically, and off to the sides are the workshops. I'm using the 2x3 living hab here, which is only available in a location I'm going to tell you at the end of the video. And it's really cool because it adds a whole lot of space to connect other modules in your ship. It's great for circulation, and it has some storage in it as well. It's not really giving you too much utility beyond that, but I like the way it looks. Off to the left is the infirmary. Infirmaries actually do have a purpose. They allow you to make pharmaceuticals to heal yourself from serious injuries, such as broken limbs or infections. And you also have a research lab in here as well for researching other stuff as you progress through the game. On the other side is the lab, which does essentially the same thing as the infirmary, but it looks different. And so I just wanted to add another hab here that looked like it was a different space. And I think it turned out really well. I really love the interior of Deimos stuff. And then towards the end of the lab is where the workshop is. This is where you can work on your suit, your weapons, as well as manufacture more complex parts on the go. This is great for having on an exploration ship. 
And then on the other side of the lab, and this isn't really intentional, this is one of the parts that I was struggling with for circulation, I would have rather had this connection happen through the living quarters. Unfortunately, went through the lab, you enter in on the mess hall, and any big ship needs a good mess hall, and off of this mess hall, you find the living quarters for the regular crew. The captain's quarters is up a few decks. Again, the arrangement of the doors is annoying with these ones because it enters in off the kitchen in a kind of meeting area, but I mean, it, it works. So you see that I was trying to make the decks make sense and their organization make a lot of sense as if it were a ship built in this world with a real person thinking behind the organization of spaces. Thinking like an architect, because that's what I am. Going up another deck, this is what I like to call the command and control deck. This isn't the bridge yet, but this is the area where you plan out things, or I might, I might imagine it could be like a, a place where you could control the ship in the event that the bridge was destroyed. This control center actually adds more crew positions, giving this ship a total crew position count of nine, although you do need to have the leadership perk on your skill tree in order to actually have nine crew. I'm limited currently to around five. This ship can actually hold a ton of people, so that's great for getting to the late game. This deck also has the armory where you can store your weapons. I think this is a great location for it. You might need to go here before you go on mission, after you plan out the mission. And then towards the back of this deck is the computer room, and any good big ship needs a computer room for, you know, basic computations and planning trajectories of missiles. I don't know, you, you, you can make it up. It, it's cool, like it's cool science fiction ship. It needs a computer room which again adds another crew position, so there's utility to it beyond it just looking cool. My favorites are definitely the computer room, because I like this acrylic glass, it looks really cool, it makes it look special, and this planning table in the center of the control room. But now I'm sure you guys are itching to see the bridge, so let's head up to the last deck, which is the bridge deck. This has access to the captain's quarters ready room, as well as the bridge itself. Now, technically, the ladder enters into the captain's quarters, which isn't Deimos, it's actually Hope Tech, and I really like the darker look of Hope Tech to have this room be a little bit more subdued, and the captain's quarters for this particular style is also really neat. I like the enclosed bed area. This also has a really cool meeting area in the back, which just made a lot of sense. It's like that ready room from the Enterprise D or from the new Enterprise. Like Every Star Trek ship has to have a ready room, and I wanted my ship to have a ready room. This is where you'll have Technobabble talking about how the grab drive is down and we need to go find Beryllium Spheres. Alright, that's from a different that's from a different movie. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know. I love that movie. And then obviously after that, it's connected to the bridge through yet another big sliding door that seals it off in case of a breach. And this bridge, the DS30, is probably my favorite in the game. Off to the left and right of the bridge are these little seating areas that have access to the captain's safe as well as the cargo, but it also has jump seats and some windows that allow you to look out onto the aft part of the ship, which allows you to actually visually inspect things like your weapons, your engines, or like the hull's condition, so it makes a lot of sense in that that's how bridges are actually designed in real life, so that you can inspect the surroundings of the ship and the ship itself. And then towards the center of the deck is this really cool planning table that's raised up. You can imagine this is where the captain stands, issuing orders to the pilot and navigator. But really the best view is towards the front where the navigator and pilot sit, because this is amazing. Like the canopy here looks great. The little raised sections on the side that give you a better view of above and below you are amazing. Everything about this bridge is great but it's really expensive, it's around 40K, and you're gonna need a higher pilot certification to actually use it. So keep that in mind if you're planning on building this ship. All right, now let's talk about how you can build it. You're gonna have to go to the Deimos shipyards. It's a moon of Mars in the Sol system. When you go there, there's a space station in orbit of said little moonlet, and that is the Deimos shipyards place where they're gonna sell you all the parts that I used to make this ship, except for the Tayo and Hope Tech stuff that I bought somewhere else. You're gonna want around, I'd say 400K to make this ship because I spent probably close to that making it, but you can get away with less, but you're gonna have a pretty big downside if you do that. Now, many of you guys said in my last video that you can just build an outpost landing pad to build with every part in the game. That's not necessarily true. You actually don't get all the specialist parts or the really big ones that you wanna use for this particular ship. So you still have to go to the demo shipyards, but you can use this pad to kind of tweak out some of the smaller pieces to make it your own and to add mix and matched kind of stuff from different manufacturers. 
All right, let me walk you guys through how I put this together. Now for you, you're gonna be buying modules and dragging and dropping them into the space to build the ship, but I'm just gonna be dragging them from my existing model since mine's already built. I'm gonna start with just the habs and from the very bottom deck, and that's the engineering hab, which is a one by three, and to that I connect my Tayo Psi Connect Bay. Now you don't have to add this for this first step, you can just use the Deimos one, and we can get back to this later, or you can get back to that after you get the Tayo set from another place. Next, you're going to connect a companionway directly above the back of that engineering bay, just above where you enter from the Tayo landing bay. This is going to help with the circulation of the ship. And then you're going to connect the living quarters, which are 2x2 two two sets, and a science lab just to the left of that. Then comes our wings with our landing gear and engines on them. These are going to be 2x1s. The first one's a workshop hab, which is a little bit set backwards in a rustic red color. And on the other side, reflected, is the 2x1 infirmary. Next, moving forward on the ship, you have the 2x3 mess hall, which is going to span the entire width of the ship. And then you're going to add the two prongs, which are the 2x1 all-in-one berths, which have the heads and beds in them for the crew cabins. Now moving up to the command deck, we're going to add another companionway for that vertical circulation space. Then to the left or port side of the ship is going to be the armory. Then to the right or starboard is the 2x2 two two battle stations module. Then the last module for this deck is the 2x1 computer core, which is going to sit right on top of the mess hall below. With that complete, we're going to move on to the last deck, which is the captain's quarters and the bridge itself. This is going to be staggered backwards, and then the bridge is going to sit directly on top of the command room as well as the armory, and to that we'll attach those little EM non-lethal weapons. So now you can see the internal layout with just the habs by themselves of the ship. This is all the inhabitable space of the ship. But now let's do the structural and other components to give it its silhouette. We'll start with the Deimos braking engines, which will cap out the 2x1 crew compartments and then we'll add some windows onto the top of that. Then we'll add the Deimos Wing A's, which will be staggered forward to stick up past the thrusters, followed by the Wing C's, which have the radiators, and then we'll cap the back with the Wing D's. Sorry, that was kind of fast. You could probably go back and pause just to see what the names of those were if you didn't follow me. But now let's get that landing gear on the ship. I actually start off with the Deimos Skeg A's, which go in front of the landing gear. These actually fit with the profile of the landing gear, so it fits really, really well. This goes on both sides of those prongs that stick out on the front of the ship. And then for the wings, I do the same thing with the Skeg A's on the fronts, and then the landing gear towards the rear of that on those 2x1 halves on the very ends and back of the ship. Next, let's get the gravity drive on there. This is a Relodyne RD2000 beta grav drive, which requires you have Starship Design Rank 1. It has a range of 30, which is really, really good. And then to that, I'm going to attach a pair of 400 cm ballast cargo holds. These can actually be replaced for the shielded cargo if you want to do some illegal stuff. Then in front of that, I'm going to attach a Tayo Spline B. This is what's going to help me connect the Deimos Belly 4 to the front of the ship on top of which I'm going to mount a Deimos Spine A, on which we can mount our 270B missile launchers. These have a huge range and do tons of damage. And then on top of that, I put the Deimos Cowling 4, sandwiching the rocket launcher and making it feel more integrated into the ship's design, something like Battlestar Galactica. Then another one of these Spine A's goes on top of the two prongs of the ship, on which are mounted Disruptor 3320 Neutron turrets. These require you also have higher specification on your skill tree. These are class C's, so keep that in mind. Beyond that are the Deimos D4s, which go behind there to bring up the ramp. And then finally, the Deimos Spine Fs, which also have weapon mounts if you want to mount some additional weapons there. But I'm maxed out on the power on this ship, so I can't mount any more here. And I got that color wrong. Sorry about that. Next, let's do the fuel tanks for the ship to give us our range. I'm using these really cool M40 Ulysses HE3 tanks, which mount on the sides of two decks. This really helps create a sense of there being intakes on the ship and gives the profile of the ship, at least in this three quarter view, a really nice look. And then I mount yet again another set of Deimos A-wings, on top of which is mounted another neutron turret. And on top of that hab, I'm going to add on the Deimos radiator as well as another Deimos cowling, which is in the reverse position. This helps integrate with the rear thrusters. You'll also notice that I've been adding windows to some of these habs. Now, this is completely optional. You can 
decide whether or not you want to have windows in a battleship. I think it looks really cool, so you know, this is this is purely optional. Next is how you're going to power the ship. Now, this is critical. I'm powering this with a massive Fuser DC-401 reactor from Deepcore. This has a 29 power output and it's Class C and requires piloting rank 4. But it's that 29 number you want to pay attention to. That's how many ticks you get on the bar to put power to your different weapons and components. If you don't have enough, you'll have an underpowered ship that can't actually use its weapons or fly fast at all. This is what gives the ship its really formidable nature. And then we're going to slap on some Relodyne Supernova 2000 engines. These are also class C's that require Starship Design Rank 1. And these are really powerful. In fact, they're the, some, some of the most powerful engines in the game. They're really good looking and they give the end of the ship a really nice silhouette. And I love the way these things are staggered. It really helps make the ship look unique. Finally, we'll cap off the design with Deimos bumpers on the top to go on the side of the captain's quarters. On top of which, we'll place a Deimos slim docker because we need a way to have the ship dock with other ships. And this is aligned with that vertical circulation throughout the entire ship that I mentioned earlier. And then finally, the shield generator and this is actually a really nice one this is a rank one type c which has five percent recharge rate and 900 max health it looks really cool too i like the kind of circular design it makes it look like a star destroyer a bit so i'm not going to sit here and pretend that this is the very best ship in the game it's probably not but it's really really good and i really enjoy flying it it certainly could use some upgrading when I am able to rank up a bit more in the game, and I'm sure you guys can provide your own tweaks and modifications to make it better for you. And if you do have some really good ideas, be sure to post them in my Discord community down below, or to check me out on Twitter or X, where you can at me and show me what you guys are putting together. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this video and you got what you were looking for out of it, and if you did, you know what to do. Hope to see you guys out there in the Starfield. It's not multiplayer though, so I guess I won't, but... You know what I mean.